Shall we, shall we start, sir? <laughs> sir, shall we start, sir? Right and tight. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Good afternoon, everybody. On behalf of the DHS Center Climate Change, Indian Water Science, Lakeside Education Trust, and the International Pediatric Association in Geneva, I have a great pleasure yesterday or to welcome to you all. We have monthly pro scientific program here based on the national importance of international importance. For the past five years, we have been doing it. This month is Rheumatoid Awareness Day. And this, we have selected the topic environmental risk factors for rheumatism measures to mitigate. I think we have a special welcome for the lady, Mrs. Ramesh. She's a yoga teacher and uh, her son is a second MBBS student and welcome to you all. And uh, to formally welcome, I request uh, Professor J. Srinivasan. He is the founder of this department. He is a graduate from the IIT Chennai, then MS in New York and uh, Stanford is his, his uh, PhD. And he was in NIA, uh, NASA and IPCC report he was a chairman. So, uh, and we have a great pleasure uh, requesting him to formally welcome the people for all assembly here. Sir, over to you. Uh, good afternoon. Welcome you all to this monthly seminar that Dr. Parmir organized. This is the fourth, third year, right? You are going through fourth, fourth year. Fourth year yeah. And we have had eminent uh, doctors come and talk to us about various aspects related to health and environment. And we are lucky today that we are getting Dr. Dharmanam for the second time. He was here last year, right? And he is now going to look at the issues of environment and arthritis, uh, a very important topic. And I request Dr. Paramesh to introduce him. Uh, Thank you. Okay. So I once again uh, have a hearty welcome to you all for this program. And just to sensitize the subject before I introduce the teacher, rheumatism is an autoimmune disease marked by stiffness, pain, and swelling of the muscles and joints. The prevalence as of 2019 is 18 million people globally. 70% are female, 30% are male. And nearly 13 million need rehabilitation globally. And in them, 0.5 to 1% of population globally. India, we have about uh, ne nearly to 20.28 to 0.7% as of 1996. Rheumatoid arthritis has a great impact in various ways. Number one, causing the joint pain and swelling. And it definitely decreases the mobility movement here and there significantly. And also causes severe fatigue apart from that one. And it does disturb the sleep. When sleep disturbance, healing process, everything will be delayed. You know that how it causes all the problems. It interferes with the independence to take care of oneself and naturally it has got the greatest impact on the and the emotional feelings social feelings and social relationships also disturbed and also it disturbs the work and the career i think our speaker is going to focus on various aspects these are all the issues we like to know a little more about it and uh, so we need to be empathic in this one, empathetic. Uh, regular exercise yoga is a very much we have to encourage in our country. And the regular diet, which has got antioxidants, more of fruits, vegetables, and all those things, healing process, less of uh, non-vegetarian food. And uh, social interaction and visiting green spaces. 
So environment triggers this disease also. Earlier we thought only only two things will be there: genes and environment causing all the problems. Genes is a brick and mortar. Environment architect brings out the disease. I think to talk about these important issues, we have none other than Dr. B. G. Dharmanam. He's a good friend of mine. He has done his basic MBBS in Chennai. And afterwards, his post graduation, post doctorate in India and UK. And he's the first formerly turned rheumatologist in the country. And uh, he worked as a chief uh, rheumatologist at Manipal Hospital for 17 years and started the fellowship program in Manipal, Sakra, and Vikram Hospitals. He's also an examiner for fellowship courses all over the country. He was instrumental in bringing rheumatology, clinical immunology to center stage in Karnataka. He has served as a president of the Karnataka chapter Indian Rheumatology Association and was a national president in the year 2021 and 23 for two years. He has special interest in chronic pain and scleroderma. He is also an adjunct faculty to Adin Chichirigiri Institute of Medical Sciences. It's a great pleasure. So, Dharmanam, over to you. Please come out. Good afternoon. And my sincere thanks to uh, Parameshwar and uh, the entire team for the kind invitation. And it's my pleasure to be here. And we always wanted to be in a scientific institute. And we could never really work in an uh, academic institution. So I'm happy to at least visit and interact with young brains and uh, seniors. So what is rheumatism? In your invite, there was a terminology called rheumat rheumatism. Rheumatism is a relatively old terminology, uh, and now it is used synonymously with rheumatic diseases. It means is any condition which can cause pain in and around the joints, and not only in the joints, in the structures around the joints. For example, if you have a tennis elbow, that is also would be considered as a rheumatism. If a cricket player gets a shoulder strain, that is also a kind of a rheumatism. So rheumatism is a very general term and um, it is not a single disease. And uh, and as, as I was talking to Sir, it at least 200 conditions, different conditions can cause some kind of a rheumatism or arthritis. That includes non-articular rheumatism or otherwise called as a soft tissue rheumatism. So that rheumatological diseases can be divided into two or three broad categories. Some are articular rheumatism, which probably I will uh, discuss in this slide. There are many types of arthritis. Commonly, they are grouped under degenerative type of arthritis, which is, we call it as a wear and tear. Most of our grandmothers and grandfathers, if they are walking, if you've seen somebody walking like this, probably they would have osteoarthritis in their knees. And if you would see some elderly people, your parent or grandparent with a knobby looking fingers, that is osteoarthritis of the hands. Unfortunately, it is a defect on the cartilage and can be aggravated by your weight and activity, particularly the sports selected activities. See, normal joints can be damaged by an abnormal physical activity and even a slightly abnormal joint. Some people with very uh, flexible hypermobile joints. Some people would probably should be able to twist their finger and make it touch here. So they are all very flexible uh, individual genetically. Some of them like madam may be uh, good in flexibility because of training. Some people are naturally very flexible. They are also little more prone to develop a little bit of uh, injury to their cartilage and they can develop osteoarthritis. And second major chunk of arthritis is called arthritis which affect the connective tissue disease there the connective tissue disease has a terminology which is uh, like come through centuries uh, people used to think we did nobody knew why it came how it came more appropriate terminology will be autoimmune rheumatic diseases but they are still called connective tissue diseases because it is everybody knows about it and it is continue the terminology continues the classical example is rheumatoid arthritis and there are also other uh, diseases like lupus. And lupus is again uh, uh, a multi-system disease. 
systemic sclerosis called scleroderma people get predominantly skin tightness polymyositis dermatomyositis it is in the news now some of our film stars have um, dermatomyositis jogren syndrome is another disease which can cause arthritis but the dominant feature can be dryness of the eye dryness of the mouth so these diseases are occur with in the joints but they can also affect any organ in the body they are multi system autoimmune diseases this is one group of uh, diseases rheumatoid arthritis is the most prevalent and most common and at least 0.5% of the indian population may have rheumatoid arthritis in the surveys we have conducted another group of disease and these diseases are more common in women which i will probably discuss in the next few slides another group of disease pondylo arthritis pondylo means back and uh, arthritis you know it's a joint inflammation so people who have predominantly spine joint or axial joint or core joint involvement this kind of diseases are grouped under spondyloarthritis ankylosing spondylitis is a very typical disease i am sure you would have seen some people who would walk like little stiff people robo like if you have seen somebody who, who walks like this they turn like this they would have ankylosing spondylitis so you just look around probably you need to see somebody in the bus you would be able to identify them this is a relatively common disease and psoriasis is a skin disease it can be associated with type of arthritis called psoriatic arthritis another group of arthritis is called crystal is metabolic disease where uh, for various reasons uric acid can go up in your blood predominantly occurs in men very very hardly in women until uh their period stop or until they achieve menopause children don't get it women don't get it predominantly men young men to uh, elderly men and it's a part of a metabolic syndrome metabolic syndrome is where you get diabetes hypertension obesity uric acid cardiovascular risk so this is the uh, the cluster you can develop and they have very severe gouty attacks originally gout every joint pain used to be called gout and uh, gout was supposed to be due to a bad humor getting into the joint and uh, causing severe agony and they couldn't cannot walk for a week then after that they can get better and become all right so it can they can they can have repeated uh, attacks it used to be called as disease of kings and king of diseases because it is always associated with over indulgence who could do over indulgence in the ancient time only kings and elite and maybe some knights some uh, whatever whatever the kings kin kith and kin so uh, alcohol and uh, non vegetarian food are the dominant cause for increase in uric acid that can contribute another group of arthritis is infections empty number of infections can cause arthritis it can bacterial that is called septic arthritis it is like a pus inside the joint let us say a medical emergency fungal infections can occur viral infections particularly covid dengue chikungunya epstein barr virus these are all common viruses which can cause severe joint pains but fortunately they are self limiting and virus can be one of the environmental factors which can 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 initiate or perpetuate uh, uh, autoimmune process and some of them have post infectious arthritis i'm sure some of you must have heard about rheumatic fever people used to get sore throat in the past now it is become disease of hysteriasis because we are hardly seeing them nowadays people used to get streptococcal sore throat and 3 2 to 3 4 weeks down the line they would present to the doctors with severe joint pains myocarditis and uh, and joint pain settles down but it the the, the the valvular damage used to linger on and people would go on to develop mitral valve disease and surgeries and fortunately they have become very uncommon and and arthritis can occur in children also at any age group from from um, few month old baby to 16 year old any 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 age group can get arthritis it's generally they are grouped under juvenile idiopathic arthritis idiopathic means we don't know a straight forward answer cause as a cause like septic arthritis we know it's a tuberculosis arthritis everybody knows it's tb arthritis but when we call rheumatoid arthritis it is a disease of unknown cause and it is multifactorial so not not a single cause and of course many other systemic diseases like if you have a diabetes you can have some form of rheumatism you can if you have a thyroid disease you can have rheumatism so 
so many diseases can present with uh, musculoskeletal pains, aches and pains, what we call as rheumatism or uh, uh, arthritis. So it is the doctor to filter out when somebody comes, what kind of arthritis, where, where am I going to group these patients into? That determines the uh, the treatment strategies and other um, uh, other measures and prognosis. Gout, we know that you are going to get better. Whatever, either I treat or not, another 10 days you will be better. But rheumatoid arthritis, if I don't treat, they will uh, go on to develop severe damage to the joints. Longer the inflammation stays in any joint, or any structure, it can lead to damage. And uh, simplest example is all of you would have had pimples in your life. Some of the pimples came and went. It has not left any scar. Some of the pimples which stayed and were stubborn would have left a scar. I have few scars here. I think 10 pimples were very stubborn and left few scars in my face. And that scar is forever, right? So inflammation into time is equal to damage. Damage is permanent. So that is the reason we need to identify these diseases early. And autoimmune diseases. What what unifies all these diseases is autoimmunity. And women are women seem to be the chosen one, as uh, alluded to you by Professor um, Paramesh. Women, 70%, uh, 80%, dif depends upon the disease. Majority of the autoimmune diseases are common in women. So I will have a brief discussion about autoimmunity because uh, autoimmune diseases are probably one of the commonest diseases to affect mankind as a group, right? Because the basic principle of autoimmunity is same. It can, the manifestation can be different. So it's a biological condition in which the immune system attacks its own uh, structure. We're supposed to protect us. Immune system's purpose is to prevent our, uh, an invading organism from establishing a foothold in our body, right? That is the basic purpose. It keeps fighting the immune system. Every day, it's a, every second, every millisecond, something is happening in the immune system to keep us safe. When it goes little misdirected and one, it can cause either directly our damage to our tissues or it can cause damage to our tissues as a collateral damage. During COVID, you would have a lot of people died due to, they didn't die to, due to COVID. It is, they died due to the hyperactive immune response to the COVID. Something like you, you saw a small, a um, mouse in this room, we can take a broom and try to hit it, or I can get a stun gun and do it like this. But mouse might die, but in the process, I, probably some of you might get injured. So that is the collateral damage. And that's what happened when body mounted a vigorous immune response against COVID. And uh, uh, that, that immune response attacked our own system, and that resulted in many deaths. Every family would have lost somebody. I have lost two aunts to, um, to COVID epidemic. And there are more than 100 diseases uh, described in autoimmune disease. This number is growing. And uh, there used to be a, a very senior uh, scholar in autoimmunity. He used to always, Hilda Schoenfeld, one of the slides has his name. He used to say, everything is autoimmune unless otherwise proved. Like that was the statement because nowadays even coronary vascular disease has an autoimmune component to it. And most important is it is a common cause of death in women. And uh, women, generally young people don't die. And uh, if, if you see young people dying apart from accidents, uh, autoimmune disease would come very high in the uh, as a cause. And it can affect up to 10% of the population. If you do a cross-section survey, they would have some autoimmune diseases. And uh, being a female, on oral contraceptive pills, that means they are more exposed to estrogen and uh, having periods. That means they, they are at a higher risk during the reproductive age group. And pregnancy itself can sometimes influence the autoimmune disease in various ways. Rheumatoid arthritis, uh, they get better during pregnancy. And uh, that was, it is interesting to know that this observation by it was observed by many clinicians, maybe from maybe Greek uh, um, Hippocrates time. But somebody got curious, why, why, why? There must be something in the woman's, pregnant woman's blood, which is making the arthritis better. They were looking for that factor. In that process, they discovered steroids. The women during, this is a stressful period, so women have more steroids. They thought that, okay, this is the uh, reason. And they went on looking for, to, to uh, what should I say, um, from a, Blood, they purify 
uh, the, the material. And ultimately, they succeeded, and corticosteroid was born. And uh, when they gave to the first rheumatoid arthritis patient, it was given. It was discovered by a bunch of rheumatologists. So it was rheumatologists' only contribution to science, I guess. And uh, they gave it to the first rheumatoid arthritis patient, uh, and the patient who, who was in a wheelchair uh, could get up and run. So that that video original that uh, like the Gandhi walking that type of videos, now the fast moving videos are still there in the internet. That created a sensation, and the Nobel Committee decided to give them Nobel Prize next year. This is the only drug discovery within one year of its discovery, and uh, use clinical usage got a Nobel Prize. And if they have waited long enough, probably they would have got all the side effects coming up, and the <laughs> Nobel Committee would have decided dilly dallied whether to give a Nobel Prize or not. That's a discovery worth giving a Nobel Prize, but they would have got it a little later. So, and women have a more intricate immune system, and uh, because it is required to be a little more uh, intricate because of the need to have a pregnancy. Pregnancy is, as you know, it is a semi allograft. So, the, you know, entire transplantation is if if you transplant some somebody's skin into my skin, it will get rejected in no no seconds. Like it within few seconds, that, that skin will die, because we are not supposed to accept any other uh, uh, human beings tissue or human beings tissue and any other animals tissue also into our body. So that is the rejection reaction, and uh, the baby is half father and half mom, and uh, that is can be kind of a heli uh, semi allograft, and the body has to find a way not to because paternal uh, antigens do escape into mother's circulation and most women who have had pregnant will have anti paternal antibodies and they have antibodies against some of the tissue some of the antigens which are present in the father so they do develop so they do recognize so they but they should not attack so their the immune system has to do a lot of jugad to adjust and accommodate the baby and then once the baby is born it has to get back to the usual self so when it is sophisticated, probably it can go wrong somewhere. And this is one um, slide which uh, shows that autoimmune diseases can be anywhere. Some of the names which you could be familiar are maybe myasthenia gravis. Myasthenia gravis, Amida Bachchan had in hand had it in Bangalore. He had, got, he had one of the acts. It was detected in Bangalore. And um, other things you would be familiar with. Pulmonary fibrosis is Dr. Paramesh uh, territory, sarcoidosis, autoimmune liver disease, psoriasis, vitiligo, alopecia, they are all common skin autoimmune diseases. And uh, type 1 diabetes is an autoimmune disease. And uh, there are so many, every organ can be affected. There are only few uh, examples are given here. So what predisposes you to autoimmunity? I will spend a little bit more time on autoimmunity because this is the like uh, you are going to hear about it more and more uh, in 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 the news. And most diseases are turning out to be autoimmune. If you have certain genes, you have become more prone to develop an autoimmune disease, which is similar to any disease. Like uh, you have a genetic tendency to develop a disease, but that alone is not enough. And the presence or absence of Y chromosome. The Y chromosome is a tiny chromosome, but uh, it seemed to protect men against autoimmune disease. Uh, uh, and um, so either having a two X, X or having only one X seem to matter in the in the chromosome. And environmental factors like infections, as I was alluded to, alluding to Epstein-Barr virus, COVID virus, they are all potent immune stimulating uh, viruses. Are or they attack the B cells, they produce antibodies, and they can produce a lot of autoantibodies during their infection. Many times they are self-limiting, but in a genetically susceptible individual, it can lead, let, lead to a more progressive disease. Diet, Professor was alluding to diet as a potential factor, as a, an environmental factor, exposure to chemicals, and we are all living in a chemical soup, Right, wherever we, whatever we do, like if you order a swiggy, it comes in a plastic wrapped bot, um, basket or a cup, and uh, it, uh, invariably the plastic leaches into the food and we eat, and that water everywhere. I think we can't escape 
being exposed to exposed to chemicals and and there are at least at least i don't know few few tens of thousands of chemicals are introduced into human beings in the recent past and the last 100 years or so it was it was the human being during evolution never got exposed to these chemicals they are man made chemicals we don't know we are still uh, still studying and getting really bogged down by the amount because it is extremely difficult to study because it is they are they are omnipresent omnipotent omniscient and uh, xenobiotics and um, xenoestrogens because xenoestrogen plastics and a lot of your cosmetics have some chemicals which can go and bind to the estrogen receptor and uh, estrogen receptors have are all immune cells have estrogen receptors so if you are a genetically prone individual this can contribute to uh, developing an autoimmune process and also there is something called hygiene hypothesis reduced exposure to protective factors sunlight sunlight is a protective factor so not only vitamin d also going being in a sunny area you having a regular sun exposure also uh, protects against cardiovascular disease and so many other diseases probably by increasing the nitric oxide secretion and so many other improving the circadian rhythm and exposure to infections during childhood if you are exposed to infections during childhood it protects against getting an autoimmune disease if you have a vaginal delivery during your birth you are less likely to have an asthma am i sure am i right sir like to asthma as a child are less likely to have recurrent infections during childhood it protects and also less likely to have an autoimmune disease because when we come out through our mother's birth canal we swallow most of the fluid there it looks might sound yucky but that's how human beings evolve and uh, and that gives us the seed for the good microbacteria is there and if you are born of cesarean session and you are exposed to a bacteria which is there in your nares and uh, whoever hand, handles the baby first whatever is there in their hand gets into our that becomes our uh, our uh, seed of micro microbiota which is there all over the body and including our gut and also there could be some gender difference in environmental exposure because of the nature probably um, women may have less exposure to sun uh due to various cultural reasons and uh, all these things cigarette smoking until recently at least women were smoking little less <laughs> nowadays i'm seeing everywhere uh, women also competing with men but i don't think that is in a good advancement i think you should you should get rid of certain behavior men used to do in compete with men but don't emulate men in all the bad things so this is the uh, professor i was alluding to hehuda shonfeld is from israel uh, he is a one of the pioneer autoimmune uh, autoimmunologist he calls himself autoimmunologist and they are not rheumatologists they, they are autoimmunologists they treat autoimmune disease of every organ so in this slide also this is the mosaic of autoimmunity what contributes genes is there in the center paradoxically immune deficiency can contribute to autoimmune diseases by One, if you are deficient in one pathway that can lead to over activity in other pathways and uh, you would see estrogen uh, hormonal testosterone decreases prolact having increased prolactin contributes vitamin d if it is low it contributes peculiarly loss of smell if you if, 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 a, if a young woman says that i can't smell good this girl may be more more prone to develop autoimmune disease by a mechanism which is not clearly understood in the environment there is a lot of stuff including vaccine infections drug Uh, and uh, exposure to uv light uv light is double edged sword for a normal people for most of us it should be good to be in the sun for a little bit of time can be good it can it stimulate nitric oxide production it produces vitamin d uh, if you expose long enough and little more skin uh, we are all covered most of the time that that we, we don't get ad adequate sun exposure our pigmentation like melanin we are little darker compared to caucasians our melanin blocks sun next sun uh, rays uv rays and we don't produce as much vitamin d as uh, 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 caucasian for the same amount of sun exposure so we may have to expose a little bit more and stay longer uh, and uh, that culturally it is it is not in our we were most of us are covered most of the time and uv light paradoxically in people who have susceptibility for certain autoimmune diseases 
it can be a booster vaccine for autoimmune disease to become more like it can the sun induce damage to the skin causes damage so if you stand, stand long enough you get a sunburn and sunburn means some of the skin cells have died and they expose their uh, in the, the nuclear material to the circulating immune cells which are trying to clear it that can stimulate the autoimmune process so it is not uncommon for a young lady who has gone to go off for a holiday coming back with rashes and more severe lupus so this i have already alluded to um, women have a stronger inflammatory response than men so they are protected against infections so you must have seen our uh, father when he was unwell he would be like a zombie in the uh, in the bed my mom went mom also would get affected but probably she would continue to serve the family and uh, do things because they have a little bit they 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 they, they, they eliminate infections little better and in this process if something goes wrong they can get autoimmune disease these are all few things uh, they have better b cell immunity increased immunoglobulin levels better cell to cd4 cd8 ratios and uh, they, they and almost all immune cells have receptors for estrogen so the estrogen hormones the cycles premenopause postmenopause everything can have some influence on the immune regulation and microbiota also men and women have a different slightly different um uh, microbiota probably uh, having testosterone dominant um, blood milieu and estrogen dominant milieu will even change the gut bacteria uh, population so there are few few studies in animal studies at least they have fecal transplantation from male mouse to female mouse all these things they can ameliorate autoimmune process obesity so many things they can do right the fecal transplantation is uh, the, the recent in thing in the science they have managed obesity depression seem to come down but there are few deaths in this uh, trials because anyway when you transplant somebody if there is an infection it can be a problem so there there was a little bit of moratorium on the uh, research in us so otherwise they have been trying for so many things weight loss morbid obesity uh refractory infections some autoimmune disease so this is um, the the gut gut autoimmune nexus is there this is a brief small cartoon describing the first top one is everything is in peace normal immune system your cells are safe autoimmune disease the same our own tissues are normal but the immune system seem to attack which is slightly different from graft rejection because Uh, there is one organ is in a different color and body i recognizes and it starts attacking this is the basic simplistic uh, understanding of uh, uh, immunity and um, graft rejection as dr parame parame was alluding to genetics load the gun and environment pulls the trigger that is how immunological disease uh, happens and endocrine definitely contributes that is the gender influence and autoimmune disease comes and uh, autoimmunity once you are you are prone for autoimmune disease and it can go on to develop more autoimmune diseases over time at least 20 to 30 percent of people with rheumatoid arthritis will have one more autoimmune disease like hypothyroidism hashimoto's thyroiditis vitiligo or alopecia etc so poly autoimmunity can occur over time and with the exposure to uh different environmental factors people can go on to develop another immunity there are few shared features of autoimmune disease like female pre predominance and uh, shared sub phenotypes there are more common things to autoimmune diseases different autoimmune diseases than differences like they all have very similar but slightly different one or two areas would be different but majority of the symptoms can be similar they always have multiple autoimmune diseases they aggregate if if my family has rheumatoid arthritis but not everybody in my family is going to get rheumatoid arthritis some of them may develop lupus some of them may develop myasthenia gravis so autoimmune diathesis go will go on in the family but it not be the same disease and uh, uh, age most of the diseases start around the, the child bearing age group and they have similar mechanism if you i can show the same slide and tell that this is a mechanism of lupus a can mechanism of uh, rheumatoid arthritis because they all look similar they look multiple all the cells t cells b cells uh, all this will interact and ultimately 
some cytokines come and you develop symptoms. So they look very similar with small nuances and similar genetic factor. HLA DRB1 is one gene which makes people more prone to develop autoimmune process. And the treatment can be similar. Uh, even if you don't know the diagnosis, if you treat with certain drug, corticosteroid respond, every, every autoimmune disease responds to it. Only few drugs are slightly different based on and slightly nuanced um, uh, changes. And this is where autoimmunity uh, and uh, normal tolerance, there is a balance. The balance can be tilted by endogenous factors, genes, female gender, immunodeficiency, stress, hormones, and vitamin D exposure, etc. And environmental factors like tobacco, your diet, toxins, infections can all, when this, this balance goes wrong, you start developing an autoimmune disease. There's a nice concept of exposomes. Exposome is collective terminology for everything we get exposed after our conception, not even birth. And uh, whatever your, your, your mom said, assume that there is a, a mother now in uh, Gaza or somewhere war torn uh, region. And uh, she would be in a tremendous amount of stress. But life is uncertain. There is a bomb going on here and there. And she will probably produce a lot of chemicals in her body that can affect the development of the child. The child's neuro connections, everything can uh, get messed up. The, the child, when they grows up, they can become more prone for depressive diseases. It can last two generations. Even we thought it is going to be only moms, even fathers, those sperm contributes only gene. See, if you look at though father and mother are supposed to be equal, they are not actually equal. Ovum and uh, sperm, sperm gives only the DNAs, they donate the DNA. And sperm, uh, ovum also gives the DNA. But rest of the thing where the, it will start growing, now they, they fuse, they start growing, it gives, gets, it needs the support of the ovum. Ovum produces everything else. So the contribution of um, maternal is more, but even father's stress can be transmitted to children through epigenetic changes. So everything we get exposed, the infections, antibiotics they receive, whether you are a vaginal bond or a cesarean bond, how many times you have taken antibiotics. I'm sure uh, Sar will uh, agree with me that most of the children's cough and cold don't require antibiotics, but they you, they require they get antibiotics because parents are anxious, doctors are anxious, your anxiety rubs on the pediatrician, the pediatrician will post to give an antibiotic. Every exposure to antibiotic will eradicate or wipe down a significant per percentage of your gut microbiome. That can change the, we are talking about in external environment. I'm also talking about internal environment. We are more bacteria than human beings. Our skin has trillions of bacteria, our gut has trillions of bacteria. So genetically, I'm more bacteria than human, right? So everything can be affected. So hormones, age, gender, genetics, nutrition is important, obesity, alcohol, exercise, all these influence through epigenetic changes. So genes contribute, but the epigenetics seem to be uh, much more important. These are all few examples of environmental epigenetic influences, cigarette smoking, vehicle exhaust or air pollution. People who live closer to highways are more likely to develop rheumatoid arthritis compared to people who live little in interiorly. And they, of course, they develop more asthma and lung diseases. And people who eat the standard American diet, like which, are, which is predominantly meat and burgers and juices and other stuff, the called pro-inflammatory diet, they are more likely to develop uh, autoimmune diseases and metabolic diseases. They, are all, they can change the epigenetics. Stress, every time we get stressed, Hundreds of genes are upregulated or downregulated. So genetic expression changes. You must have seen during your stressful period, or during exam time, you would catch a cold little easily. If you are stressed tomorrow, you are going to have a major interview, you may start sneezing today. So these are all possible because they're all through genetic, epigenetic changes. Genes are same, epigenetic changes. Sun exposure, I've already told you, circadian lifestyle and uh, we are supposed to be awake during the sun hours and sleep during once the sunset happens. But thanks to last the electricity and uh, Thomas Alva Edison, I guess, you have to blame him. And uh, we can do everything in the nighttime. We can have an entire production factory 
and uh, all your phd guys i'm sure you must be uh, sitting in the night and doing your uh, projects we have all done we do night duties so this disrupts our circadian rhythm and there can we are still paying a huge price because the the most restorative sleep is supposed to come between say 10 30 12 11 to 2 30 to 2 30 right most most of my including my children they are they are still awake at 233 wherever they are whichever country where world they are part of world so entire younger generation to be living until 230 and then they sleep up to 10 they get the 8 hours sleep but that may not be as good as the sleep which you are supposed to get and physical activity is an epigenetic influencer in a positive way like gentle physical activity is immunoprotective but very vigorous activity if you are in a flu season you do a big marathon run you are more likely to catch uh, infections but if you do a regular regular activity half an hour ka gym to half an hour yoga that up exercises you will be protected hygiene hypothesis we have uh, discussed uh, worm infestations have been protective found to be protective if you look at the um, um, the the epidemiology of the diseases in the world uh, some autoimmune diseases are much more common in so called developed countries and also in india it is more common in rural uh, urban centers rather than rural centers and worm infestations uh, are are kind of protective and there is a few, few studies using ascariasis lumbricans they even actually put eggs into people's mouth they allowed the, um, uh, the worms to develop it showed some benefit and nowadays they are trying to get some extracts of the worm and try to treat autoimmune diseases and microbiome and autoimmunity i think we'll discuss phytoestrogens i've told you stress and immune system and uh, i'm not I'll not go deeper but stress can cause accelerated aging by chronic promoting systemic inflammation by epigenetic changes it can cause obesity and it can make you susceptible for virus infections and also make you susceptible for uh, inflammatory diseases including autoimmune diseases so modern lifestyle and diseases you can use the same slide for any diseases pollution smoking circadian rhythm disturbance stress physical inactivity obesity western diet gut oral dysbiosis can lead depending upon what kind of a genetic susceptibility you have you wherever there is a weak link in your chain it will snap if i am my weak link is allergy if i i am doing all these things which are there on the left if I, I i am in that category i may develop chronic allergies asthma etc if i if i have got a certain type of genes i may develop, develop fatty liver and um, uh, diabetes and uh, i can age immunologically faster and in age autoimmune diseases also certain autoimmune diseases occur with aging so we are going to get that diseases little faster so this are all this is the kind of a mosaic where people depending upon what kind of a genetic susceptibility you have you can develop various kind of diseases and diet can have an influence one huge example is uh, celiac disease this is wheat sensitivity disease and 1% of the caucasians maybe much smaller proportion maybe 0.2% of the indian population can have celiac disease and they can present with nail disease diarrhea weight loss infertility and um, stomach symptom joint pains etc it is an autoimmune reaction to uh, a protein in the wheat called gluten the gluten is the one which uh, gives you the your chapati dough or dowy feel that's a gelatin type without that you won't get that that roti ka uh, uh, consistency you can't make a chapati like stuff with rice rice doesn't have that glutinous substance and there are studies to say that fasting fasting by reducing the antigenic exposure can reduce ameliorate any autoimmune disease if you fast most of the people improve but moment you start feeding things worse so there is a connection between because mouth gut is the largest area where we get exposed to the external environment those the gastrointestinal tract is inside technically looks like it is inside the body it is outside actually technically outside right so it is like a tube which goes through our body and comes out right so only a thin layer of cell separates 
our body and the lumen. The lumen is where the food, fecal material, everything is there. And uh, the gut bacteria lives there. So the gut, that's the importance of a gut bacteria in keeping the barrier intact and uh, reduce the exposure of the antigens which are there in the foreign material which is there in the food. We have to accept certain things as a food and digest it and reject certain things as enemies don't accept it. So this is a very tricky area for autoimmune disease. So most people with autoimmune disease have what is called as an increased intestinal permeability. They're called leaky gut, which improves with fast fasting. And there are a lot of studies with vegan, vegetarianism, lacto ovarian with variable results. And red meat seem to um, uh, increase uh, rheumatoid arthritis risk. Gluten-free diets are popular in uh, West, but they are not uniformly successful. Some people feel great without celiac, uh, in, with wheat. Some people don't. Mediterranean diet is the most studied and most uh, liked diet, which seem to reduce the incidence of so many cardiovascular disease, autoimmune disease, etc. Anti-inflammatory diet is simply no processed food, less sugar, less salt, predominantly fiber-rich diet. That means you have to eat more veggies and your legumes and lentils, etc. And uh, fish oil and vitamin D are the supplements which most of us routinely use. And they use a lot of other uh, nutraceuticals and herbal products. They're all supposed to be good, but nobody has done a great study to say that uh, they are good in a population. If you look, there are a lot of studies in the, uh, in the animal uh, level. So all ashwagandha can make a lot of positive changes. Boswellia, turmeric is, but in a large study, when they study turmeric, it failed. They could, it could not improve rheumatoid arthritis uh, symptoms, but unlikely to be harmful. So every disease starts from gut. It was attributed to Hippocrates and I think entire philosophy of Ayurveda is gut only. So they always talk about gut, cleaning the gut, and it's the largest immune organ. This is the largest, it, in, entire immune system gets trained in the gut after we start eating they are exposed to so immune system has to get trained to see which is food which is not food so that entire training process happens in the uh, gut associated lymph lymphatic system it is interface between self and non-self and leaky gut i've already told you it's common in rheumatoid and ankylosing spondylitis so by decreasing antigenic load uh, we can decrease the symptoms and we during fasting the lymphocytes comes down and Stem cell regeneration can occur. This could be a positive sign. And fasting can alter the microbiome favorably. This is one example of uh, fasting mimicking diet. There is a diet called fasting mimicking diet. They try to mimic fasting by still give them 800 calories of food. In this study, in, they studied in multiple sclerosis model. Uh, during the fasting mimicking, the five days of fasting mimicking diet and after that refeeding. During five days, the lymphocyte count significantly comes down. Lymphocytes are the autoimmune cells. They are the ones which cause autoimmunity. That comes down. During regeneration, when the feeding regenerates, most of the cells which are coming back don't have that autoimmune features. So this could be uh, an adjunct to uh, the medical therapy. So microbiome is also considered as a target. And it could be the link between nutrition, diet, and autoimmune diseases. Short chain fatty acids are produced by gut bacteria, which we cannot produce. And, and the, the, the bacteria which produce like fiber. Fiber is there in the in your um, soluble fiber, insoluble fiber. Your banana, if a raw banana will have a fiber, which is not digestible. It, it actually we feed. When we eat a raw banana, probably we are feeding the gut, gut then as so when we eat a fiber rich diet half of the food goes to the fiber like uh, to the gut bacteria of friends friendly gut bacteria i'll put it that way so we are not eating we should not eat only for us if you eat a pizza if you eat a um, truffle or something like that it's eating for us sometimes we have to eat for ourselves as well we, we can satisfy our dopamine receptors and happy hormones but we should also eat for our friendly gut bacteria because uh, they like fiber rich diet and uh, that can make a huge difference because they produce stuff which we cannot produce and which can reduce intestinal permeability. It can tilt the immune system to a tolerant stage rather than a hyperactive stage. And um, 
as I, I already alluded to about fecal transplantation and fasting. And um, this is a cartoon. And weight loss is also considered autoimmune, uh, anti-inflammatory. So obesity also promotes autoimmunity. And uh, obese people have more inflammatory cells compared to uh, regulatory cells. Regulatory cells, T-regulatory cells generally dampen down the autoimmune process. Immune cells amplify the autoimmune process. So losing weight can be one strategy to um, get better. Air pollution, it, when all these particular materials can be taken up by the immune cells and it can activate the immune system, uh, both uh, and autoantibody production and T-cell mediated uh, in, in, inflammatory pathways can be aggravated and they are more prone to develop autoimmune diseases. Uh, cigarette smoking, one of the way it can produce uh, autoimmunity is through uh, the respiratory pathway. And uh, the first, some of the antibodies are seen in the respiratory secretions before they are seen in the blood. And these are the environmental factors like pollutants, pesticides, glyphosate, and um, all nanoparticles, heavy metals, everything can alter our own uh, proteins. So enzymatic post-translation modification can cause citrullinization, deamidation, so many reactions can happen. They, they, it alters our molecular structure of certain enzymes to be little look different. Our immune system thinks that it is enemy and starts attacking. That is how these antibodies are produced. And that antibodies can go and settle down in certain joints. It can go and settle down in the kidney and initiate an inflammatory response. In rheumatoid, again, it starts with preclinical autoimmunity in a genetically susceptible individuals, epigenetic changes, early disease, antibodies are produced, mild symptoms come up, That is the reason we are not able to immediately go and cure the disease because the process which starts today I get arthritis, but the process started 10 years back. We cannot go back and uh, get rid of the infection which initially stimulated it. I'll skip this. This is a slide actually liked. For most part of the history, people sat down to rest. Now sit down, they all sit down to work. Am I right? Right? This could be the problem because the sedentary lifestyle is also a contributor to so many things. Like sitting is a new smoking, uh, and uh, so there are you might have seen this kind of a quotes in uh, every and they are also they can alter the you can make you fat and uh, uh, they can affect epigenetically unfavorably the immune system as well. So when to for us to get better, we should look at life as a system approach. Medicine is one definitely one part. When something is got got established, you come with a swollen giant, you can't walk. We, we can fix it, but we, it, it is important to look at every part of our life to get a much better immune system so that we can uh, we can deal with the disease. Sometimes some diseases are inevitable, right? Sometimes we can't change our parents if you carry certain genes, right? We, we, we have to live with it, and we have to. Add, but if you take care of all these things. The impact of the disease can be reduced. May not be in all the diseases, majority of the diseases. Environment, both internal environment, like our gut bacteria, skin bacteria is very important. Like um, people develop eczemas, and we are all obsessed with you no know, sterile. Thanks. Good that there is no uh, spirit or sterile in here. Otherwise, everywhere is there people COVID, post COVID, you know, we are all obsessed with that. And uh, we are taking bath two or three times with life by soaps and uh, uh, Detal soap. They can they make our the skin has got its own microbacteria, and uh, this bacteria is protects against our skin diseases. And uh, we vigorous washing. And if you have seen somebody with the OCD, their their hand looks nasty. They look very um, sick and unwell. And I am people with dry eyes, dry skin. They scratch and get an infection. So they night they, they'll scratch like this. They'll then next day they become a boil. So uh, we, have, we, are, we have become hyper uh, uh, concerned about the hygiene and probably damaging our own gut bacteria by eating everything uh, like, like a 
standard American diet are a, a pro-inflammatory diet. We are messing up with the internal microbacteria. Antibiotics, frequent antibiotics, unnecessary. I mean, if you are life, antibiotics are life-saving when it is required, but many times we can manage without it. I have not taken an antibiotic for last 10 years, except when I went for a dental some treatment. They said you should take. There is no other go. I was trying to avoid. He said mouth is full of bad bacteria. You will get an abscess. So that's the only time I, I take. There is no need. I, I would have had enough infection. I had COVID three times. So what got better within without within within a week or so four days five days. So it, it is possible for us to live without antibiotics. So and you have to choose between. Sometimes when you are sick, yes. And take care of the body, exercise regularly, yoga, med uh, Pilates, whatever exercise, whichever you like. Yoga is not the only exercise you can. If you enjoy dancing, that is a good dance uh, ex exercise for you. And sports, lifestyle and diet. Of course, take care of your spirit, mind and emotions and social life. Having friends definitely helps. And uh, having a social life helps. All these things have a positive, not, not only like helps for mental well-being. Yes, definitely helps for mental well-being but also helps for immunological well-being. And you have more social life, better you would be as a whole. And these are few evidence-based recommendations for preventing rheumatoid arthritis, stopping smoking, reduced exposure to environmental pollutions, maintaining a healthy weight. There is evidence for all these things. Increase the leisure time physical activity, maintaining a good dental hygiene. This is one area uh, we don't go to dental surgeons as frequently as we should. Every six months, we should try to supposed to go and make sure that there is no big, small issue lingering on inside because this can have an adverse effect on the immune system. And uh, if a woman is pregnant, longer they breastfeed, they, it protects against autoimmune diseases. And maximize dietary quality, fiber-rich diet, avoiding high salt diet, omega-3, you can say supplement or eat. Uh, good quality fish, reducing the sugar content or sugar softened drinks. Moderate level of alcohol could be good, but this we won't recommend to anybody to take alcohol to get not to get rheumatoid arthritis because most people don't stop with moderate. That's a problem and it, it is a liver toxin. Alcohol is a toxin. So, it, it, but there is an evidence. Like so, when evidence there, I have to put it here, but it is if you are fond of alcohol, occasionally you can enjoy a glass of wine, but uh, it is not for indulgence. And of course, be vitamin D replete. Take vitamin D supplementation because most of us don't get enough vitamin D uh, because we wear uh, clothes, cover our body most of the time, and we don't spend that enough. And in our culture, we don't do um, go to the beach and sun sunbathing. And it's not in our culture, so it is difficult uh, even for me to go in a shorts and uh, without uh, uh, any dress to wander around in this. I would not do. Most people would not do. So that is difficult. So supplementation could be an answer. This is my last slide. This is a general slide. Whether you have autoimmune disease, I want to live better. And we have, there is something called stress coping account. All of us have a bank account. Increase the deposits. Sleep well. Move well. Have an healthy diet. Try to meditate. Have a purpose in life. Sometimes we don't know what is our purpose. But ultimately, you will know that there is one thing you really enjoy doing. And sometimes you forget time when you are doing something. That is probably your purpose. That, and it could be a hobby also. It can be, you may be occupied as a bank clerk, but doing some social service can be your your purpose in life. So you can still do it. Having friends, have, being have, having having a happy married life, and having a lot of joy and laughter. There are deposits. Opposite is a withdrawal. Minimize the withdrawal. Stress, poor sleep, lack of exercises, shift work. If possible, not to get into shift work, if possible, unhappy job, conflict in marriage, loneliness. Loneliness can be another new smoking. Loneliness, sitting, they're all pretty bad. And uh, poor diet and pollution. So try to minimize this wherever within our capability. Have a well-ventilated home, have an indoor plant, and uh, take some tips from Dr. Parmesh and his team to improve the in indoor, uh, reduce the indoor pollutions. And this would make us a better, uh, better human beings and probably give us a much better health. Thank you very much. Thank you. And open to any interaction. The small crowd you can ask. Anything you want to know. Any questions, please? Time is short. Please go ahead. 
and we have a, all of us uh, have to join us the picture after this. Yes. Any questions? Okay. Dharmanand, you made the topic so simple and so that all of us can understand what it is. And thanks a lot for covering a whole lot environmental issues and bringing up the rheumatoid factor. And four or five points I like to stress here. The slide number 19 is a very good slide. Seven item you mentioned, what are the things for bringing out the environmental issues, nutrition, access, a whole lot of things in relation to the rheumatoid factor. And uh, I like this one, the genetics loads the gun, environment pulls up the triggers. I think it's a fact, genetic, what we mentioned earlier. And uh, environment, uh, has an impact on womb to tomb. Epigenetic changes does happen. Air pollution is an important factor, especially less than 0.25 micron travels through, through the blood stream all over the vital organ. That one small particle. And uh, so the circadian cycle you stressed uh, three or four times you mentioned about it. I think nature has provided circadian cycle. Every animal has got circadian cycle. And also it helps the healing process. Melatonin is uh, produced at night time. Usually 9.30 p.m. melatonin start producing. That is the time start thinking of going to bed. 7.30 a.m. until that time it produces. Until that time it will be there. Blue light disturbs the sleep. Red light is good and yellow is good. And avoid light, don't have the uh, walking light and all this thing, you can use the torch. You should cover the windows and all this thing light. So that you also mentioned very well. And cesarean section you mentioned very well, it's a fact. So normal delivery, you get the maternal germs, birth canal germs, they will colonize. Intestine is called the second brain. All our immune system is controlled to that one. And there's a connection between gut and lungs, gut and brain, lung and the brain they're all interrelated so you covered very well having and once again i thank you very much for uh, spending so much of time with us and interacting with us and on behalf of the uhs and climate change unit of science we have a small token of appreciation small memento is there i request professor srinivasan to hand over to you sir Yeah, I know. 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 I know